Hi, and welcome to Danielle's Denture Diaries. I am Danielle. If you watch my channel, this is kind of new. It's not real. It's just a magnet, I swear. Um, I've always liked the idea of facial piercings. However, I made a promise to my mom once upon a time, a really long time ago, that I would never ever do anything to my face. But that's never stopped me from liking how it looks on other people. So this is just me being a child, I guess, because sometimes we kind of have to do that, right? Um, but anyway, so I wanted to start off by saying thank you. And I wanted to say thank you for so many different reasons. First of all, the channel here is still growing. And for those of you who have been around for a long time, for those of you who have watched some of my older videos, the whole intention behind me starting this channel wasn't really an expectation of anything in particular besides bringing about awareness and acceptance overall, not only amongst other people, but also for ourselves, people that wear dentures, because for me personally, it was hard enough to accept that this was something that would eventually come to pass. And then once it happened, it's done. And you need to find your new way of making this a part of your identity and owning it and make it your own. And something that had worked for me and helped me was seeing other people be successful with dentures, seeing it showcased and seeing it play out and how people are living their lives as though nothing had even happened or changed for them. So that was the whole point of me starting this channel and to see more people wanting to be here, more people that are finding a sense of belonging here to whatever degree that might be thank you. I'm beyond happy and absolutely proud that you want to be here and listen to some of the things that I have to say. And I know sometimes my videos get to be really long-winded, but I really just wanted to honestly say thank you. And I also want to say thank you to everyone who has stuck around since the beginning of this channel, really. There is a handful that I remember by name and I try and make a really good point of making sure you guys know that to the best of my ability, I do my best to remember all the conversations we have. <laughs> um, I always wanna stay in touch with all of you because something that I noticed as a YouTube watcher is sometimes I felt like my voice was not being heard and something that I don't want you guys to ever feel here is like you're not being heard, you're not being seen, and you're not being listened to. I see you. You are gorgeous. And I love having you here. And you could be spending your time elsewhere. But here you are still listening to me rant and say thank you in a very long-winded way. <laughs> I also wanted to say thank you to everybody who have been saying congratulations on my engagement. Um, it was it was seen coming, but not the way that it happened. Um, I was at a point in life where I was content with being alone and still working on my channel here, working on self-love and self-respect and my job and everything else. And out of curiosity one day, I downloaded Tinder and the rest was history. And again, I didn't think anything would actually come out of Tinder, especially with some of the things that I've seen and heard. But thankfully, like I said in my past video, I wasn't catfished, so that's a plus. <laughs> um, but anyways, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, Throughout this video, I am going to be looking down at a couple sticky notes that I have because what I really felt I should stick to in this video was revolving around the comments because I've been getting a lot of them and I'm absolutely happy to address comments not only inside the comments but also here on a video 
conversation. I know that you can't really talk to me, but um, this way it's a little more personalized, I guess. I don't know. I, I wish I could speak to you guys and not have to type out a comment to you. I don't know how it feels for you guys, but I really, I like the idea of kind of shouting people out with their comment and how I can help and how I plan on helping. So let's get rolling with it. One of the videos that I'm thinking about creating is going to be um, one where a commenter had mentioned um, wanting to see how I do my eye makeup. And I totally recognize that it's not normal with my channel to do makeup content. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is rather than just doing an eye tutorial, I'm actually going to be doing a mashup again. So similar to how I did my C-Bond wafer demo, I would be doing the upper C-Bond wafer demo. And once I have it in, and I'm waiting for that C-Bond to set and dry or take hold. I'm going to be also talking and using my time to talk you through how it's feeling as well as through my eye makeup. And then by the end of it, we can see the end result and how strong the hold is just like before. So let me know what you guys think about that idea. And if these are kind the kinds of videos that you wanna see more of, let me know. And I'd love to incorporate different things. Um, another comment was regarding suction with the upper denture or lack of. Since the beginning of my healing journey, my gums have definitely been shrinking and that's totally normal. Um, your dentures are intended, at least your immediates, to be bigger. They're meant to be durable but also to allow expansion room for your gums to swell and then heal and do whatever they need to do within reason. Um, one of the things that I've heard with having immediate dentures is that it allows your gums to heal better into the shape or the form of your denture, but again, still just allowing that space. Now, when you have that space, mixed with the fact that your gums are healing and receding or um, healing smaller or shrinking, whatever you want to call it, um, you're going to lose suction. So that's what I've been experiencing so far since the beginning. And I went and I got one soft reline. Um, it was scheduled for a little while after, a few weeks after my extraction um, to allow for the stitches to be healed and the stitches to actually come out. Um, I had had that scheduled in advance before I even went in for my extraction appointment. And ever since then, um, if you've watched any of my other videos, there's one where I am talking about um, the fact that I have to go get my hard reline next. And because I mentioned that, my dentist actually said it would probably be best advised to not get a soft reline at this point and to just wait for that hard reline. That being said, my bottom denture does feel comfortable for the most part within reason, and I'm gonna talk to you more about that here in a second. Um, I do use those C-Bond wafers. Um, it's soft and it tends to fill that gap for me. With the top, it is loose. Even right now, I am wearing adhesive, but if I push or bite down on one side or the other, I can feel my top denture rock. And that's not necessarily a good thing. It means that my top denture is now ill-fitting and it really should be getting that soft reline. It needs something to fill that gap because eventually that can lead to other issues down the road if I prolong getting it taken care of which was kind of my concern. That's why I asked my dentist if we could do the soft reline. He recommended against it because sometimes it can make things too tight and worse. So I'm kind of having second thoughts on that as time goes on and I feel my top denture getting looser. Something else that I'm actually thinking about doing is using my 
um, Densure, 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 um, not Densure, no, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. My cushion grip. <laughs> I got two or three boxes of cushion grip way, way, way in advance, and I never used it, and now I'm very tempted to use it. So, that being said, with the comment specifically regarding that top denture, I hope I kind of answered that question. I know that it was a lot of information that I just gave. There's just a couple variables that could be coming into play here. And I did leave you a direct comment just so that I could further help you and talk you through it rather than just a video. But this is something that other people most likely would want to hear too. So, um... I would see about getting that soft reline if you haven't already. Um, I would also look into using the soft um, C-Bond wafer to fill that gap maybe even. And also looking into using a temporary soft reline such as cushion grip from home until you can get that soft or hard reline. Um, personally that's kind of where I'm at so we're actually in the same boat. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> we have we have life vests. We'll, be okay. It'll be okay. <laughs> um, another thing I wanted to talk about also was um, a comment regarding um, the tongue burning and having something white sometimes. If I'm understanding correctly, this is actually something that I went through in the very beginning. And I don't know where you're at in the healing process. Actually, I can look right now. So I'm actually going to move my camera over here for just a second. Sorry, I know that this also is not normal, but anyway, here we go. Oh, and I have to plug in my laptop. I am so professional. Yeah, okay. Um... Oh, you're about a month in. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I have you right. I have you literally right next to my camera right now. Um, so you're about a month in, and you're experiencing the same thing that I was experiencing in the beginning, also. So two things. One, I love using a tongue scraper. So it sounds much more intense than it is. It's actually not as bad as it sounds. It does help if you look in a mirror though. Um, I don't know how bad you are with gag reflex or anything like that, but sometimes for me, looking in the mirror helps because I know when, what to anticipate when, where, I don't know how that helps, but it does. Um, but using a tongue scraper to remove potentially what sounds like could be that kind of black and it could be coming from a few different things. It could be coming from your biofilm which is a very natural way of your gums healing. Your mouth cannot produce a scab the way that your skin can when it's trying to heal. So instead it creates biofilm. And it's basically pushing all the things that don't belong out into a filmy mucus. And you wanna spit that out and rinse it out the best you can as often as you can. Um, Basically, it does not belong. And for me, the saltwater rinses helped. Depending on where you're at, I don't know if you were approved yet to use a mouthwash or anything else, but along with scraping your tongue, something else that I still use to this day, mostly because creature of habit, if it's working, don't try and fix it, type human here, <laughs> is Aura Gel. Um, do 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 mouth sores, mouthwash, antiseptic rinse. Um, it's supposed to be really good for like denture sores, that kind of stuff, so I imagine it's just going to be good for me for probably ever and ever, but not the particular bottle. I'm going to get more. Anyway, um, but using that when you're approved to use mouthwash also to make sure we're cleaning out that bacteria. Another thing is just making sure you stay on top of the recommended hygiene. Um, eventually that stuff will die down. Um, to me, I did get fearful that it would be a forever type thing and that it would lead to something further. 
So I would still recommend calling your dentist's office and leave a message for the provider or the assistant, the nurse, the dentist himself, the surgeon, and see what they think. Um, for me personally, they said it should clear up on its own. If it gets to a point where it's not starting to heal or go away, then giving them a call. Um, if it progressively just continues to get worse or doesn't start to clear up at all. And for me, it just took a few weeks of consistently cleaning and that kind of stuff. And then tongue scraping really made me feel better personally. Um, and now it's not nearly as frequent that I have to do that. I still tongue scrape because I've become accustomed to how it feels. And I like the feeling I get out of it afterwards. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Could just be me. I don't know. I'm assuming these things exist for a reason. People like this. I don't know. Why do we like the things we like? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. This is a really random video. Um, and thank you if you're still listening. <laughs> um, another the thing I want to talk about is I also want to talk about where I'm at with my dentures myself and also with yet another um, denture real life run-in that I've had that I thought was very interesting and actually really satisfying to have had. Um, but let's start with where I'm at. So. I mentioned in previous videos that I'm beginning to have more bone pieces come forward and it's all in my bottom um, jaw and it's on the inside of my gum, so towards my tongue. And it's the worst on the left hand side. I look today and it almost looks like I have like three or four pimple looking things and it's just so, so painful. I'm not even gonna lie. It's not unbearable. It just gets to a point where by dinner time, I am right back at not wanting to wear my denture. And now it's for a different reason. It was because of a cut down here, which got that resolved and I feel much better biting down. But now what I'm experiencing is that as I'm wearing my bottom denture, I'm biting down to apply pressure to where those bone pieces are trying to come out. And I don't know why I feel like that makes me feel better to bite down harder, but that's just what I end up doing. And I do it when I'm in the car, I do it when I'm at work and I'm not talking to somebody. It's just something I keep doing to apply pressure, like it helps. And it really probably doesn't. By the end of the night, I take my denture out and even today, I took my denture out. I ate my dinner without my bottom denture. I know guys, I know. I just got to a point where I was practicing eating with it. We're gonna adapt. This is just the name of the game, right? We're gonna adapt, things are gonna happen, things are inevitably gonna come up. So this is where I'm at. I had to eat for the sustenance, right? Because that's what we're doing here. And I popped it back in for the sake of seeing you guys. It's the fact that I can deal with it. It's just very uncomfortable. But again, using the Seabond wafers is helping. So if you're somewhat late in your denture journey healing process like I am, I recommend having those on hand just in case if something like this does happen because putting the hard acrylic or plastic on my gums right now, I imagine would hurt really bad. So, and I'm still hell bent on wearing it. So, I'm gonna make it. All right, so that's where we are now. Oh, and one other fun fact. So, back when I had my veneers and my crowns, I always would find that I would chew on my right hand side and that's because my left side was very broken out, very messed up. And I still even before then had always noticed that I felt like there was a harder time connecting my right side teeth 
to my left side. The same is true today. Like, wait, am I experiencing deja vu over here? Like, I'm pretty sure I got my real teeth pulled out of my head. So what is happening? Like I'm in the twilight zone over here. Well, when I take my dentures out and I just kind of like look at my gums, my jaw is actually like literally like, like crooked. Isn't that wild? The things that you see and the things that you're suddenly aware of in your mouth like I don't know anyway so that's been affecting my biting as well right now um, but my denture run in let's talk about that here for just a second or 50 I don't know we're gonna see how long this goes so I I work at a gym um, and the person that I was sitting with um, the wife had had to take off because she had to go get her dress fitted for a wedding and the gentleman still was sitting with me and I was you know helping finish up everything for the both of them and he made a comment and he said your teeth are really white and very straight can I ask what you use to whiten them I don't have it in me to even lie I just can't lie I don't I don't feel the need, I don't feel compelled, and I suck at lying anyways. If I were to try and lie on the camera right now, you guys would know. And I don't know how you would know, you would just know. Apparently I have a really good giveaway that everyone just knows. So, even if I was joking, I couldn't. I wouldn't get away with it. So anyways, um, I just looked up and I was like, well, I wear dentures actually. I got dentures this past year. And he was like, wow, like, they look good. Like, that's incredible. That's amazing. And we chatted just a little bit longer. Um, I mentioned, you know, oh, he had asked, he said, are they the snap-in ones? I said, no, they're actually the old school dentures. It's just a horseshoe and a palette. And I use adhesive. And I don't really mind. I'm not even thinking twice. I'm just kind of talking. And he actually came forward and said, I'm actually a lab tech for porcelain teeth, for crowns, veneers, caps. Like, I, I'm actually in the lab creating those. So it's really amazing to see the turnout because it's very rare that I actually get to see the turnout. I just make it and I send it back. And I looked at him and I was like, are you serious? Like, if no one has thanked you yet, like, I'm very well aware that the likelihood of you having created my dentures is probably very unlikely, but I cannot thank you enough on behalf of everyone anywhere who has had dentures and had it change their lives for the better. I'm not saying that it's all good. Just saying that real quick. For those of you who have had to endure not so amazing experiences, I, I did not forget about you. For the people who did have an amazing experience and a life-changing experience, I was like, thank you. I cannot thank you enough for the fact that it allows me to smile in pictures with my son. It lets me talk to people the way I'm talking to you and do my job. I can talk like I can eat. And he just sat there beaming ear to ear and was like, yeah, it's just, I mean, and you also don't think about who these teeth are being made for and you're young. And I was like, I am young, but it doesn't matter. I, People everywhere all over the place are looking to have these teeth allow them a second chance with life. That's the whole purpose behind it, really. And we don't really think about how teeth affect us until something like this happens. And even sometimes I forget what my life was like before these dentures. And when I think back on it, I'm like, wow, this is... 
that's just wild. Like I look back at my early videos and those pictures that I shared with you guys and I'm like, how? How did that even happen? Like that is just crazy. And at any rate, it was just a really crazy thing to actually sit across a desk with a lab technician who knows firsthand the work and the craftsmanship that goes into creating these dentures. And I don't know if I'm going over the top here, but for me, in my perspective, it was always just me to the dentist, with the assistant, with the hygienist, with the surgeon, but I never got to ever see someone, a face, to the people who are actually in the lab creating these teeth and hopefully producing high quality, hopefully producing attention to detail, and hopefully producing something that actually gives someone a second chance. And maybe it's not always perfect, but damn near close. <laughs> um, so for me, it was just, I'm always just really grateful for anyone and everyone who has a part to play in helping people change their lives for the better. All I can ever do is just express gratitude and being grateful. Um, cause I know it definitely didn't just start with my dentist and end with him. It took a handful of people. There were different nurses and hygienists. There was the surgeon and his assistants. There is my dentist, of course, who approved the entire process. There's the people who work with insurance who make sure that people can obtain dentures and can make things affordable or somewhat affordable. And then you have the people who are in the lab who probably never really hear thank you. So I know I went off on a tangent, but it was just a really amazing perspective. And I always love like that church run in I had and now this run in and it actually came out that his fiance, his soon to be wife actually works for a denture or not a denture, a dental clinic. So it's just a couple from the dentist industry. And I just, I told him, I was like, thank you. Like for what you do, for what your wife does, for what your fiance does. Um, I'm assuming here, personally, I didn't say it out loud. I'm assuming they're very good people who genuinely care about what they do for a living. But just to be able to say thank you for me was almost kind of therapeutic. <laughs> um, and then he did end up mentioning that they had a friend who was looking at potentially doing the denture process herself soon, eventually, who knows. And if you are here and you know who you are, hi and welcome. I'm thrilled to have you <laughs> and I hope my videos help. But it was just overall just a really therapeutic experience for me even because I don't think I'm ever going to meet that lab technician who created my dentures, but the difference that they've made in my life, the impact it's had, the changes overall, even in my personality, are mind-blowing. So, anyway, so that's that. Um, so, for those of you who want to go ahead and stop watching the video, I realize I'm about to hit 30 minutes. I totally understand. In this next segment of my video here, I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of bonus material, as I do sometimes, because sometimes I just like sitting here and hanging out with you. Um, whether we're driving in your car, I love long car rides. Hey, if you have a 30-minute commute to your job or whatever you're doing right now, cool. I have a 30-minute commute. It's awesome. Not on gas, though. <laughs> um, if you're cooking, I hope it's something real good. <laughs> Um, I hope you're having fun. But anyway, so the next piece that I want to do is share some photos because, again, some of the, one of the biggest things that made me change to saying, you know what, I've got to just do this, was way back when I first had my son and I realized that I was not taking pictures with him 
And if I did, I wasn't usually smiling. I was doing like a, like a tight lip smile. And when my son looks back on those pictures, I want him to know that I was genuinely happy. I wasn't in pain. I was okay. Um, that he is the best thing in my life. And for me personally, I lost my mom back when I was a teenager. And it's those kinds of pictures that I want him to be able to have one day when I'm not here. So anyways, without further ado, I'm going to be showing you guys some pictures from my engagement and they're smiling, of course. So anyway, don't judge me. I totally just thought we were going on a date, but um, this is what I wore on the date. This is the day before Valentine's Day, so it was on a Sunday. And this is us after getting engaged. I'm like really blurry. I'm sorry. Maybe if I turn down the, the brightness, right? Maybe. Let's see if that helps. Let's see. A little bit. <laughs> so what's crazy is I listen to mostly rock music and like Netflix is one of my favorite bands right now. I'll listen to Hollywood Undead. I'll listen to really just a variety of things. Um, Disturbed, Avenged Sevenfold, you get the idea. Um, Escape the Fate. And he's a country boy. So it's really just kind of interesting how things just kind of happen, the way things work out. Um, I kind of had an idea from the beginning based off the way he would talk when we were dating, but I really didn't really know until the day I saw him wearing his cowboy boots, which I think are the most adorable things ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we ended up being engaged by a lake, which I couldn't have, I couldn't have asked for it to be more perfect. Um, but again, I'm actually smiling in these pictures. I know they're kind of hard to see from my phone. I really need to learn how to edit videos. I found out YouTube has a video editor, but it's also pretty limited on what it can and can't do. Um, just a little, I know I'm not smiling in this picture, but it's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, so just smiling really big. And if I hadn't gotten my dentures when I did these moments wouldn't have been captured the way they were and I do have pictures with my son I won't show his face here I'm pretty sure yeah um, anyway <laughs> um, but just oh man I'm trying to get out of it now ah ah okay just overall super happy. And this is a picture I sent my best friend shortly after. <laughs> and I'm wearing the ring. This is like after being proposed to, but at any rate, that was just something else I wanted to share with you guys, especially with all the thank yous flooding in. Um, you guys deserve to be in the know about that. Um, the fact that life does go on even after having your teeth pulled, no matter how many it was, maybe it was all of them, maybe it was only one, um, it doesn't make what you went through any less valid. It doesn't make your feelings right now any less valid. It's okay to go through motions of crying and frustration and second guessing. That is totally normal. We all do that. And as far as I can tell, every YouTuber ever that I've watched does it and has those bouts. Cheryl, I know you're watching this video. <laughs> um, but it's okay. 
it's okay no matter what you're feeling. Um, you can't really expect someone to go through something like what you're thinking about going through or what we have gone through together and not feel some kind of way about it. That just wouldn't be realistic. So be patient with yourself. You will get through this. You will own this and you will make it a new version of you. And your future is going to be much, much brighter as long as you just stay patient with yourself, stay loving, stay caring. And in the days and moments where you really just want to cry and you can hear this little mean voice in your head being really rude, just remember that you need to talk to yourself as though you were talking to a very little baby or a child. You wouldn't berate them for crying or being hurt. If they were in your position, you would be taking care of them, being nurturing, being compassionate, being caring, and you would want to help them. So in those moments, make sure you check yourself. Make sure you are taking care of yourself. And like I said, most importantly, loving yourself because you are so beautiful and you deserve nothing but the best and the biggest hug I would hug you right now if I could <laughs> um, and for those of you who are brand new hi I do long videos um, and thank you for watching the entire thing um, if you like these kinds of videos go ahead and hit that like button and if you have more ideas or thoughts to videos like this one, go ahead and leave a comment. I will do my best to always get back to every single one as fast as I can. And if you would like to see even more videos from me in the future, go ahead and subscribe and I will talk to you later.